All right, we're talking about the row and we've talked about doing rows with an unstable neck, right? The neck is falling towards the ground. You're, you're training this forward head posture, which is especially problematic if you spend a lot of time at the computer, right? So I wanna use your training to fix those postures or to um, be the opposite of those postures rather than feeding them, right? You're probably already good at bringing your head forward. You need to be good at holding it in a neutral center position while you you know are under load or some sort of duress um, the the big thing that happens here is it's not just the neck and we've mentioned this in a previous video it's not just the neck it's the rest of the spine right so if my butt is sticking way out and i'm walking around on my toes maybe even walking around in high heels it's really hard to get the right neck position normally my spine has to follow the rest of it. And if my toes are up on the ground, my back is going to be more arched. My low back is going to lose, or my uh, upper back is going to lose some of its curve. My neck is going to lose some of its curve. And you get people walking around with this military posture, or you get people walking around with this really sagged forward head posture. So, we have to not just look at the neck. It's really common to evaluate where the problem is, but the problem is maybe originating somewhere else. It's maybe not originating in the neck. And we talked about this already when we said we need to stay strong on the hand after we cue the neck because I need a nice stable midsection if I'm going to keep a nice stable neck. But it could go even further. Maybe the position of my hips, of my pelvis, of my abdominal muscles is determining what my neck is doing. So if we're gonna look at this from the, you know, what everything, what is everything that can go wrong? And we're gonna start at base level. What I like to start people with is the rock back with abs is what I call it. You get, you just hands and knees, you shift your butt way back and you pull your belly up so that you can engage all of your abdominal muscles, not just the ones in the middle, towards the top of the abs. I want the outer lower abdominals to turn on. So I pull my belly up, I tuck my hips underneath me, kind of like tucking my tailbone between my legs, and then I breathe out really hard. And for most people, you just feel those abs turn on right away. Not everyone feels it that way. I know I didn't when I first tried it, and I know I have plenty of clients that have trouble with it. Um, it's totally normal. You just gotta work on it. You gotta keep getting that position, that nice rounded position. Sorry if I hit that mic. Um, nice rounded position and force that exhale. That will give you the leverage for your abs to turn on. And when we can do that, then we can start to take that arch out of the back if that is indeed what you have going on here um, and you know regardless even if it isn't the problem that you have it's generally very good for your pelvic bones and for uh, how your spine takes load it is just a good great you know if you've watched all of these videos that i've made over the last year i've talked about the rock back with abs probably at least seven times in different um, contexts because it's just so useful. It's a great place to start. So if we're, you know, if you can't just cue yourself into a strong, stable neck position while you're doing your row, then we need to start looking elsewhere. And I would suggest starting from the ground.